Good evening all and good evening to the public. I wish this was over to the side so that we didn't have our backs to the public really. But because uh, you used to have it like that, it would be nice to... But I think it's better than what you had before, uh, two months ago. Because um, the public online need to see you carefully, don't they? Mm -hmm. um, with regard to the minutes from the last meeting, can I just remind this town council that in March 2022, under this administration, an astounding oversight was made by the chairman of Portica Town Council and the clerk that the clerk, sorry, could exclude residents' names from minutes with specific reference to public participation. Astounding because the very people in the town council's controlling party, the Portica Independent <coughs> Political Party, were the very same people who supported residents prior to 2019 who were campaigning to get the public's names reinstated in minutes. Residents succeeded prior to 2019 and again in 2022. Having reminded the Town Council of this in writing and at the next meeting after March 2022, the mistake was acknowledged and the names were reinstated. Yet here we are again with the full Council meet minutes from January 2024 with not residents on the, the, the minutes, as people have already highlighted. So I won't labour that. But it's really important because how can a council be open, transparent and honest when residents cannot check what has been said and by who? And you can't check whether something you've said is correct if you haven't got your name in the minutes because you don't know which ones relate to you, especially if the minutes are quite summarised. So please reinstate them on documentation. I can see there's a bit of inconsistency. Some have got them on, some haven't got them on. Um, but these minutes are viewed online by public who don't attend these meetings um, and it's important that they're there. Um, it may of course be another oversight but it shouldn't really happen. Now public participation has changed many times in Portica Town Council under the pre-2019 administration and post-2019 under the current political parties control. But please can I remind you, as we've reminded people in the past, that you do not represent yourselves, you represent the people of this town, the electorate of Port of Head. Public participation is important, and I can recall your political party telling our town that it would be better engagement with the residents and the public, that the public could then contribute to decision making. They would actively take part in meetings in groups. I believe it was really called the flat pack democracy. There are some here tonight who had advocated and promoted that process, but it never happened. Now, you're all members of that same party, despite one of you having been co-opted on as, a, as an independent. And in fact, I think the wording was, and I must add this, um, you actually said that you weren't affiliated to any political party in your words. But after one meeting, separately, you've changed your mind, which is very bizarre, but I'm not going to label on that. But you now have a public participation working party. And I would just like to know, if I can't find anything online, why was it formed and what was the objective of the working party? How are you choosing the members of that party? And is it open to everybody in the town, um, especially the ones who can't come along to the meetings uh, for various reasons, specifically those that perhaps can't make it because they're not able-bodied or there's other reasons why they can't attend on. Interestingly enough, the Community Matters meeting name is fairly ironic because there's rarely anybody from the public who attend that meeting. So something is going wrong. In fact, one of your members be believed nobody came to town council meetings because everything was going right, much to the shock of people at a previous meeting. Now, fortunately, Ben Aldridge and Paul Churchill, and I'll include Alan George on this as well, have become highly respected residents and councillors. And finally, we have leaders of this town council who put our town first and treat everyone both in it and out of town council buildings fairly. So are those two important councillors, three if you Alan and George, on the public participation working party? Councillors Churchill and Aldridge have the respect to residents because they're honest and have integrity. To have councillors leading the working party and contributing to decision making whose reputation online and in meetings is anything less than the good conduct demonstrated by councillors Aldridge and Churchill 
is unacceptable. How can the public trust a public participation working party that has members on it whose behaviour has been called into question and evidenced in writing as derogatory towards the public? <coughs> members who had to leave town council meetings for poor conduct during public participation. And I'm emphasising public participation here because if you have a public participation working party, you want everybody on that working party to have shown respect to the public during participation. Finally, with regard to video recording by the public at town council meetings, I'm very pleased to hear that you've acknowledged that legislation allows us to, to record. Um, but I do want to just correct a few things. Um, it was actually tabled by the Conservative government, not that I'm political anyway, and it was improved and introduced to ensure that local governance was more open, honest and transparent and managed for the benefit of the public. There is no requirement to give notice that a resident will be recording. Councillors do not have the ability to stop those recordings unless they are being undertaken in an obstructive manner that's obstructing proceedings, which in fact in the January meetings they weren't. Consent is not required under the legislation and that goes for the public as well as the councillors. With regard to the councillors, they can't refuse, they can't say we don't want to be filmed. With the public, I think people would always want to listen because there might be members of the public who don't want to speak and be filmed and in fact that's always been adhered to. Um, there have been a couple of people in the past who didn't want to be filmed but sadly they weren't being open and transparent with the public at Port of Penn so the decision was made to carry on filming because it was important that that subject was highlighted. And just finally on that matter, whether a council ha councillor has been reprimanded and even ejected from council meetings for covert filming or other misconduct is totally irrelevant to whether a, a member of the public does so. Town council filming policies are also not legislative. Government legislation is, and breaching legislation is a crime in law. The public is protected by legislation. The January minutes do not record that I actually explained to the chairman the legislation, and I continued filming adhering to that legislation and good conduct, which I can confirm I have always shown in these meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of